Good morning. Welcome to our service of morning prayer. Um, today, the Church of England celebrates the life of Anselm, Abbot of Lebec and Archbishop of Canterbury, who is a major teacher of the faith. And it's appropriate that in Easter season, uh, we celebrate Anselm, not just on the day of his death, but also because in Easter season, um, we remember particularly the redemption that Christ has wrought for us on the cross and in the empty tomb. And of course, um, Anselm was a great writer about why did God become human? And, uh, and so he was instrumental in how we think about our own redemption. And so today we pray with Anselm, and so all of the words that you need are on the screen in front of you. So let us still our hearts. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day that you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And Psalm 8. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained. What is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him a little lower than the angels, and you crown him with glory and honour. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands, and have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Let us pray. We bless you, Master of the heavens, for the wonderful order which enfolds this world. Grant that your whole creation may find fulfilment in the Son of Man, Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from St Paul's Epistle to the Colossians, chapter 1, beginning at the 15th verse. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless, irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. 
I became its servant, according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he powerfully inspires within me. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Alleluia. So let us pray. And we begin our prayers on this, the day in which we pray with Anselm, Archbishop of Canterbury. We pray for the church. And we pray particularly for our bishops. We pray that they be encouraged. We pray for their spiritual and theological growth. We pray for the fulfillment of their ministry in a church in which the teaching of Christ is honoured. That they would enable us to be a people in which the word of Christ dwells richly. And so we pray for them, for the renewing of their minds, for the enlargement of their hearts, and for all the many gifts of grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the world and all of its many needs. We pray for all who keep the fabric of our world together. For our politicians, for the civil service, for all of the people who are administering, administering payments to those who need furlough support, for all of those who keep our environment healthy and safe, for refuse workers whom I can hear just outside, for those who work in the health service 
in whatever capacity, but particularly those in frontline care. For care workers, for workers with children and families, for social workers, for those who are enabling people to cope with illness or bereavement or disability, for those who support them, for those who minister to our need for mental health care. And we pray particularly today for funeral directors, especially as the peak of mortality attached to this virus is upon us. We pray for them, for their safety, for their mental health, for their good spirits. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are in any sort of need, but remembering especially those who are laid low uh, by the virus, those who are recovering from the virus. And we pray for Margaret and Keith, for Chris, for Jen. We also pray for all those who have conditions that the treatment of which has been affected by the crisis in which we're found. We pray for Chris, who is shielding at the moment. And we also pray for Helen Julian. And we pray for all of those whose bereavement, though not related to the virus, has been necessarily overshadowed by lockdown. And we pray for Gilbert, whose funeral was yesterday, and for his widow Anne, and ask that God would be with her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, who gave great gifts to your servant Anselm as a pastor and a teacher, grant that we, like him, may desire you with our whole heart, and so desiring may seek you, and seeking may find you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. So have a good day. Please stay safe. Please stay well. Um, I hope to see you this evening for uh, Compline, um, which I'll try to do for nine o'clock. We were a little late um, yesterday evening. And um, for those of you who've contributed prayer requests, please do keep emailing prayer requests, not just for yourself, but for those who, for those whom you know. And I'll try to include them in our prayers, either in the morning or in the evening. So, so please do keep emailing me with prayer requests and we will include them. God bless you.